When it comes to automating your life, ChatGPT and Zapier are a match made in heaven. In this video, we are going to teach you how to combine ChatGPT and Zapier to automate your life through something called actions. Action. 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 This is going to save you a ton of time and it's really quite simple once you know what to do. So to begin with, you're going to go over to this exact URL. This is going to take you to your login page for OpenAI. Now, what's important to remember here is that you need a paid subscription to ChatGPT in order to do this. Once you're here, you're going to head over to your API keys and you're going to create a new key specifically for this function. So give it a name. And once you've verified it, you're going to receive an API key. I want you to keep that safe. And then the next thing you're going to do is head over to settings, organization, and you want to retrieve your organization ID. Both of these are going to be very important as you set up your actions in your GPT. Hey, before we go any further, if you're enjoying this video, click on that like button and subscribe for more content just like this. Once you've done that, you're going to head over to Zapier. If you haven't already set up an account with Zapier, please do so. You'll have 14 days to try it out and really see if it's for you. So we're gonna go ahead into Zapier. In the sidebar, we're going to look for apps. You won't have any apps at this point, but what we're going to do now is set up a new app connection. So as soon as we do that, it's going to create a pop-up it's going to ask us for permission to access ChatGPT, the OpenAI account. And all we need to do here is put in our API key along with our organization ID. And then once we've done that, we can then change the name of this connection. And then if you click on those three dots as well, you can then go ahead and test the connection and look at that successful. So our first step is successfully done. Next up, we're going to go back to ChatGPT, and this is very important. You need to go to OpenAI and you need to fund your account. Now, remember when you are using the API function, this is different to your monthly premium. So if you go into your billing settings, you can go ahead and have a look at some of the pricing structures. So to use the, the GPT model, you're looking at about one cent per query for input and then three cents for an output. And that basically becomes a lot cheaper depending on which model you are using. Now, it's important to go ahead and put some money into your funding. Otherwise, your actions are not going to function. Once you have done that, you can head to ChatGPT, and this is where things get interesting. In some of our previous videos, we've showed you how to create your own GPT. All you need to do is click on Explore GPTs, and then go to My GPTs or Create. And as soon as you go into Create GPT, it would bring you to the creation platform, and you could create your own GPT right over here. For our tutorial today, though, we're going to use one of our previous GPTs which is the business mentor GPT that we created. And what we're going to do here, if we go to the drop down menu for our business mentor, we're going to go to edit our GPT. As soon as we get in here, you'll notice that on the, the top bar, we have the configure function. We're going to go ahead and configure our GPT. We need to scroll down to the bottom to where it says create new actions. This is the function that we're looking for. So as soon as you click on that, you're going to notice that it asks you for a schema. If you look in the examples, it'll give you some schemas to use. And this is basically a code setup that will be used within your GPT. Now, go ahead and remove that because that's not the schema that we are looking for. The one that we're looking for is directly from Zapier. So you're going to go to this URL over here. And it's going to take you to the exact page where you are going to get the AI actions integrated from Zapier to ChatGPT. If you scroll down through the document, you're going to get to the Get Started tab over here. And all you need to do now is copy this link to your clipboard. Then we're going to head back into ChatGPT and where it says Import from URL, we're going to paste it in there and we're going to then import it. And there you go. Everything you need will now be successfully imported directly into your custom GPT. 
Now, right at the bottom here, you'll notice that there are available actions. Now, those are just test actions right now. We are going to go ahead and fix that up in a second. If you wanted to make this GPT public, you would go ahead and add a privacy policy to it. Very important. We're just going to use it internally for now. Once we've done that, we're going to update our GPT. And then after we've updated it, we're going to go back to our Zapier document page. And we're going to look for the rules. The next stage in what we're doing is adding a few rules to our GPT so that we can set the actions in place. So you're going to go ahead and copy all of this text over here. Then you're going to go back into your GPT and this configuration block over here for the instructions, you're going to open it up and underneath all your current instructions, you are going to paste in all the new configurations or the new instructions and the rules that you've copied over from Zapier. Now, right at the bottom here, you're going to notice that there are actions and configuration links. We need to remove the action and the configuration link, and we need to update it with the specific actions that we are going to use in our integration. So in order to do that, you're going to head over to Zapier again, and you're looking on that document for this URL that takes you to start. So you're going to copy it, and then open that up in a new browser. And once you do that, it's going to redirect you to this page over here. Now, once you're logged into Zapier, it's going to tell you if you have any actions. We don't have any actions currently, so we need to add a new action. So you're going to click on the new add new action button, and then you need to give your action a name. Now in the search bar, any app that you want to use specifically, you can type it in there. And as soon as you do, it's going to give you a whole lot of functions that you can use. So we have access Google Calendar and you can see that I can find an event, I can create event details, I can quick add an event. There's a whole lot of functions that we can go ahead and use with this. So what I wanna do is I want to find an event then you're going to link the account that you want. Then there will be a whole lot of fields that you can have AI guess, or you can be very specific about it. If you click on show all options, it will give you access to a lot more details. We're going to go ahead and enable the action. And you're going to see here that is not toggled to green. That means it should be active and it should be working. There's two things that we need to do though. And we need to make sure that we do them correctly in order to make sure that this works. The first is that we need to make sure that we have chosen the correct name. So we're going to go into this action again, and we're going to look for show all options. And then we're gonna scroll down to where it says action name, okay? And we need to make sure that we have the correct action names. We're going to give it a new name, which is find Google calendar event. And as soon as we've done that, we're going to save it somewhere. And then we're going to click done. And then very important, the URL that you find this on, you need to save that as well, because that will be your configuration link. So once we've done that, we're going back to our instructions. And now the action, we're going to put in the action name over there. And then the configuration link specific to what we need. We're going to remove the second action for now because we don't need that exactly and not yet. And once we're happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and update it. And then we're going to test it out. So I'm going to test out the first function here and I'm going to ask it, go to my Google calendar. Do I have any meetings today? Just a simple request. And you'll see that it immediately goes to the call function. And now I need to allow it. I can say always allow if I'm happy with it. But for the preview, I'm just going to say allow. It goes ahead and it starts talking to Zapier's actions. And it's going to tell me that uh, it's checking. Then it's going to ask me if I have set up the configuration. So I tell it I have. And once again, it's going to start. I need to confirm that this is uh, exactly what I want. These are things that you'll need to do the first time around. But once you've done it once, you don't need to worry about it again. And there we go. It tells me that I have coaching sessions at exactly a specific time. With these action functions, I, can, I don't need to toggle back and forth. I can do everything from ChatGPT, which is going to save me a whole lot of time. 
So that's one function, just one use that we can go ahead and do. Now, let's say we wanted to make this a little bit more involved and we wanted to add a different step to it. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So we're going to go back to Zapier. So now I want to send emails. What I do is I will look for Gmail send email. Then with that, I need to set up the account. So I need to add in my Gmail account. Once I've done that, I can then specify if I want AI to guess the to function, the subject, the body. If I'm happy with that, I can then progress, give it a name. And the name that I'm going to give it is send email. Nice and simple. And once I've done that, I'm going to make sure that I grab the URL for the configuration link. Now I go back into my instructions. I'm going to add a new line for another action that it will perform. And you can add as many as you like. So I'm going to go ahead and click action, which is send email. I'm going to go ahead and grab my configuration link again. Make sure it's the correct one. Then I'm going to go ahead and update my GPT. And now I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to say check my Google Calendar and let me know if I have any upcoming meetings. This time around, when I ask the question of how many meetings do I have, it comes up with a whole lot more, not just the next day, but it gives me for the next couple of weeks, all the meetings that I may have. So now I'm going to ask it to email one of my coaching sessions uh, clients. So I'm going to ask it to send uh, Jason Smith an email reminding him of our meeting. Not only does it go ahead and formulate the email for me, saving me a whole lot of time, but it's also going to send it for me as well. So not only does it email Jason, it also tells me what it's written. It formulates the email for me and it sends it off as well. So if we look, I'm going to open up the email that was sent and look at that. Sent to Jason. Hi, Jason. Remember the meeting that we have? Wow. That is pretty awesome. What I will say is please make sure that you test out all the fields correctly for the email function to make sure that they are working correctly, especially if you're integrating other apps like Calendly or something else. But there you go. That is exactly how you can set up ChatGPT and Zapier so that GPT can be your own personal assistant. What do you want to automate? What would you like to save time on by automating through GPT and Zapier? We'd love to hear your answers in the comments below. We hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial linking through the two heavyweights of automation. All the links you will need will be in the description below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe for more content just like this.